a messenger to remind them and to teach them and to expound the truth to them. So they were favored in that regard. Now, I want us to think very carefully about the, the many different and diverse religions and beliefs that existed in the time of Jesus. And what we begin to understand is something quite remarkable. If we examine the mythologies that were prevalent at the time, of the various gods and the various pantheon of gods that people in the world worshipped at that time. We had the likes of Apollo, of Hercules, of Dionys, who were worshipped by the Greeks and the Romans. Of course, Mithra was a god that was worshipped by the Persians. Adonis and Artis were worshipped by the Babylonians, Osiris, Isis and Horus by the Egyptians, Baal, Astarte and Tammuz again by the Mesopotamians. And all of these gods had a very similar story and this is now where it becomes quite fascinating. All of these gods, if we examine the mythology the story and the history of these gods, they all shared an almost identical and similar story. First of all, they were all called mediator, savior, healer, light bearer, deliverer. These were the common names of these gods. And their story almost always is orientated around their birth taking place on or around the 25th of September of a virgin in a cave. These are all human beings who are gods. So they are man gods. And often they are the son of a god. And often we find, as in, in the case of Mithra, for example, they are part of a trinity of gods. In the case of Mithra, we have Mithra, Sol Inviticus, and Saturnilius. This is a trinity of gods the Romans, in fact, invented. And it becomes very important, this particular trinity, and this particular belief the Romans had, will become very important and we will understand it, God willing, in a minute. So all of these gods were born on or around the 25th of December. At that time, they were defeated or nearly overcome by darkness and the god of the underworld and they were taken into the underworld. But, they were reborn again. They were reborn again. And their rebirth always took place on or around Easter time. Their rebirth took place on or around Easter time. In fact, the word Easter itself comes from the name of the goddess of light, Aostra, or Astarte, or Ishtar. Ishtar, Astarte, Aostre. They are the names of goddesses, and the, name, the word Easter is actually derived from them. Sunday is named after the sun god. Tuesday, Thursday, four after four. In fact, all of the days of the week that we know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they are named Saturday after Saturnalius. They are named after Roman gods. Sunday was the holy day of most pagans. Because all of these gods that we're talking about were derived from nature worship. And their story was all the same because the experience of human beings was very similar throughout the world. They found that on or around, and I say the world, the Western Hemisphere of course, down in Australia it works quite differently. Okay? But we're talking about the Western world here. 
we find why. Why is their story so, so similar? Why is their story so, so much the same? Because this is what paganism is. Paganism is the worship of nature. And so what happened on or around the 25th of December? Around the 25th of December, what do we have? The winter solstice. The winter solstice is the time, is the shortest day. And for pagans who worship the sun, the sun was one of the most, the, one of the most, the things they worshipped and reverenced the most. So at the time of the winter solstice, they imagined that the sun was dying. That the sun was dying. In the northern hemisphere, especially up in the north, that is why, for example, they would cut down an evergreen tree. They would cut down a tree, an evergreen tree. Because everything was dying, the leaves were falling, the plants were dying, but these trees, the evergreen trees, still had life. They were still green. So they imagined, therefore, that the evergreen tree was symbolically connected to the God of life. Or it had within itself a God that kept it alive. So they would chop it down and they would place it in their homes. And they would decorate it. And underneath this idol they would place presents underneath the tree. What is now known as the Christmas pudding, that orb, I don't know if you have that sort of half orb, the Christmas pudding, and they, they well uh, maybe the Muslims here don't know about it, and they pour over it brandy, and then they light it, and it comes ablaze. These are all connected with the pagan rituals that are supposed to return or bring back the dying sun. So the sun is dying. The sun is dying. And on the 25th of December, so the, the winter solstice is on the 22nd, but on the 25th what happens? The sun is reborn. The days begin to get longer. The sun is reborn. And once again the sun returns to life. So at this time there is great celebration, great festivity, great enjoyment. Because the Savior is born. Now whether it was Artis, Mithra, Osiris, Baal, Dionys or Jesus... It's the same, the same mythology, the same concept, paganism. How Jesus came to be mixed up in all of this, we'll see, inshallah, God willing. Now we find the story goes on. Because at Easter time, is the time of full rebirth, the time of resurrection. Again, in the Western Hemisphere, what happens is, things start coming back to life. The leaves start appearing on the trees, the, the birds start laying their eggs, the little bunny rabbits start appearing again. Okay, thus the Easter bunny, thus the Easter eggs. It is all connected to paganism. And very often we find again in these mystery religions, these pagan religions, this god whether it's Mithra or Osiris or Artis or Dionys or Hercules, often they are nailed to a tree or they are bled. And their, bled, uh, and their blood and their sacrifice, which they sacrifice themselves at this time of Easter, gives life again. And through that, the people are delivered, life returns, sins are forgiven, and life is renewed. This is pagan mythology. Now, they, re they discovered in about 1903, German excavators, they discovered the story of the passion of the Babylonian Baal. Baal actually is mentioned quite a bit in the Bible. Baal is one of the gods that the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, again and again they seem to keep going to the worship of this Baal. That's why what the, the, the God keeps sending